Welcome back to the channel, my name's Sean Evely and in today's video we're going to be doing some saw milling on the Logosol F2 sawmill. I've got a lot of stuff to mill up so it's going to be a fun video and I hope you enjoy it. But before we get into the video, I just want to thank Richard Nolan for becoming a new patron. Your support is really helping the channel and helping me continue to make two videos every single week. If you're interested in getting involved and getting channel perks, all the information is down below. One more quick thing to add. I highly recommend wearing all your PPE when using a chainsaw. I was using eye protection and ear defenders, however I wasn't wearing a safety jacket or trousers. I highly recommend you do that. The reason I wasn't was it was a very hot day, I know that's not a good excuse. But also using the log sole sawmill is actually really safe. It's permanently mounted onto the sawmills, so it's impossible to get any kickback and cut you. The only danger there is, is if the chain breaks and flings back at you. So make sure you properly tension it on the bar and it's sharp and in good condition. So I'm gonna stop talking and let you enjoy the video. The Logosol F2 sawmill is pretty quick to set up. Initially when you buy this and it comes on the pallet, it's in more pieces than this. The main frame section uh, comes in a few components that you need to put together. Once you've assembled most of it, whenever you you put it away it only collapses into about six pieces each of the rail sections and then you got the two side you know log lifters now to save on the assembly time when putting it together the angled support brackets that attach between the log lifters and the rails I actually keep bolted in one side and then I just fold them down into the frame so then I have two less bolts to reattach if that makes sense and the same with the middle section the angled support just lifts up and then I'll bolt it into the frame but when it's in storage I'll just fold that down so when I assemble this it might look small but that's because I've assembled it in its smallest configuration when you buy this you do get multiple rails to make it longer if you like one nice feature of this sawmill is everything is joined together with the same nut and bolt on all the components all you need is an allen key and and a you know a socket you can use a wrench or a spanner um, it's pretty easy to assemble Okay, so the first log we're gonna be milling up is this huge half round ash cookie. Very big and chunky, and I've got some really cool ideas of what I wanna make with this. So when this dries, you'll definitely see those videos. So I got the chainsaw all set up, and I've got this steady arm on the bar. When I first started saw milling, I had this bar on, and I took it off because the bolt that attaches the arm to the chainsaw bar flew away during use. So I picked up another bolt to give it another go, but I don't have high hopes for it because I find that the vibration of the chainsaw as it's running tends to loosen that bolt and it will fall off. So then this steady arm is no longer attached to the bar and it's pointless at that point. So I suspect I'll be taking it off but um, we'll give it a go this time. And I put some Aspen fuel in this chainsaw, which is really good pre-mix fuel. As you can see, it's for most gardening equipment and there's lots of benefits of using it. There's long shelf life, it's easy to start. There's no ethanol. And as you can see there, there's some of the benefits of using this fuel. And obviously I put in some steel uh, bar oil. So the chainsaw is mounted to this carriage, which slides along the sawmill track. Now, the way you attach that is with just two bolts but you've got to get these coupling bolts which um, don't come with a chainsaw but come with a sawmill they replace the standard nuts to uh, attach this cover on so it's basically this longer nut with another thread on the end so then you can put another nut on to uh, attach the carriage so the Logosol F2 sawmill was designed for uh, milling boards and rip cutting but if you wanted to cut cookies that isn't a problem what I've done is I've made this board that slots onto the log lifters and then you can screw your cookies down to the board and lift it up that way. The reason I'm doing this because obviously the cookie isn't wide enough to fit on the log lifters itself. You need a board underneath to support it. Now with this method the possibilities are endless. You can cut all sorts of things on this chainsaw, different angles and you can create different jigs uh, as long as it's supported by the log lifters 
you can cut anything you want. So I'm going to put this log on now. So the way I attach it onto the board is with L brackets and I just screw one side into the board and one side into the log. And I put a few of these on and that is enough to hold it. Now obviously you are screwing into the log so wherever the screw is you'll need to cut that off after. But if you're doing this with boards you normally cut off the end anyway because of checking. But for cookies I'm not too worried because I'll be cutting a lot of the sap away after and the screws don't go in that deep. So I'm going to screw a few of these L brackets in all the way around. So let's do that now. So I noticed as I was doing that, as I expected, I hope you can see on the camera, but the bolt uh, has come loose. And as I was going, I was watching it, and uh, the vibration of the machine was turning, and uh, this was lifting up, so it's no longer kind of supporting the bar. If you have any idea of how to fix this situation, then uh, I'd like to hear your suggestions down below. But what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna take off this arm because it's not doing much and I have done a lot of saw milling without this arm and it seems to work perfectly fine anyway. So I'm going to remove this arm because I don't want this bolt flying off when I'm saw milling. Then we'll cut the next slab. So now I'm ready for the next cut. I think I'm going to make three slabs out of this cookie and I'll probably use two for a coffee table and one for a side table. So they're going to be quite thick slabs. That will help prevent uh, a lot of movement and cracking. So I'm going to warm up the chainsaw and then make the first cut. Okay, so I've cut all the half rounds and I've stacked them on my log shelf. So they're gonna dry there nicely with all my other wood. And the next wood to mill up is, I have a couple of these stumps that were donated to me. They said it was cherry, so hopefully I can get some really nice boards out of these and make a couple of boxes. So let's give that a go. Okay, so I just cut the first slab and let's open it up. So as you can see, the color is fantastic. However, this is not usable, unfortunately, because there are these huge cracks all the way down. And as you can see, the wood is actually too dry, which I had a feeling about before I was gonna mill this because the guy that gave them to me had been sitting in his garage for many years. So I knew it was very dry, um, but I didn't know it was this dry. So sadly, this will be firewood and I'm not really a resin guy, so I won't be filling those cracks with resin. Uh, it's a shame because the color is fantastic, but it is so brittle, this wood, and it literally crumbles in your hands. So even if you filled it with resin, I don't think it would hold up. So they're on the fire now. Now they did give me two logs, and I thought maybe this one's a duff one, so I gave the other one a go, uh, just to see what it was like. And it's even worse. <laughs> Huge cracks all the way down it. So brittle. Just, it's, it's crumbling away, this board. So I don't think there's anything saving it. Okay, so I want to try a little experiment. As you can see, with this half round, to get the top flat before I uh, milled the first slab, I did this skimming pass and took a very thin layer of uh, the half round off. And as you can see, it's curled up so much and actually it has created a really nice, you know, effect. So I want to experiment with this and I've put a full cookie on the sawmill now and I'm going to take 
another very thin part of the top and see how it moves and warps and maybe I can turn that into something. If it warps the right way then hopefully I can turn it into maybe a fruit bowl if all the sides kind of lift up then I'll get a really nice dish cookie and then I'll be perfect for a fruit bowl. So let's see how that goes and I'll leave it a couple of days and I'll show you what it looks like then. <laughs> So it's only been a day, but as you can see, it has bowed so much. Kind of looks like a Pringle. So as you can see, the cookie has moved so much and it looks so cool. It has sort of created a dish shape, so I could turn it into a fruit bowl. But if you've got any other ideas of what you would turn this into, then I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. Okay, so now I've got five very nice chunky cookies, which will be brilliant coffee tables or side tables uh, once they're all dry. And they're all about two inches thick, so I shouldn't get too much movement, but once they're dry, I will make a router sled and uh, flatten them before sanding. Now on pretty much all the slabs, it has this weird kind of uh, white patchy area, as you can see there. And there now I don't know why that is so if you do I'd love to hear it in the comments down below so I'll either have to you know begin to like it and say it adds character or I have to sort it out not sure how I'm gonna do that yet it might fade away but I'm pretty sure it won't so I might need to do some staining or some inlay over that area to kind of hide it or just leave it let me know what you think in the comments <laughs> All right, and that is all the saw milling for today. We got a lot done. It's a shame about the cherry logs. I would have loved to have some cherry boards for some box making, but it was just crumbling a pie in my hand, so it wasn't usable. But hopefully in the future, I'll be getting some more logs to mill up and make more projects with. I'm still blown away by this cookie and how much it has warped. It just looks fantastic. And so that I know you stuck to the end of the video, please comment down below and tell me what you would turn this very thin, warped cookie into. I'd love to hear your suggestions and I might just do one of your suggestions. So thank you for sticking to the end of the video. If you're new to this channel and you've stuck to the end you've probably enjoyed the video so make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you're new. So yeah thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in a couple of days for the next one.